In this video, I will derive the Boltzmann distribution. Imagine you have a system of a large number of particles, and these particles may occupy various energy levels. And then there's a way to find the distribution of the particles in those various energy levels. Let's associate it with the maximum number of microstates under two constraints. The first constraint is this. The total number of particles is a constant n. The mathematical equation is this. So what is Ai? A sub i is the number of particles that occupy the energy level i. So really, we're looking at a1, a2, a3, a4 as the number of particles occupying the energy levels epsilon 1, epsilon 2, epsilon 3, and epsilon 4. The second constraint is this. The total energy of all particles is a constant e. So therefore, ai times epsilon i is the total energy of the AI particles that occupy energy level I. And then we sum it up, we get the total energy E. And this is a constant. So really, we are looking at a isolated system in which uh, there's no matter exchange, there's no energy exchange. And this distribution associated with the maximum number of microstates is called the Boltzmann distribution. And this maximum number of microstates can be used to com uh, compute the entropy of the system by using Boltzmann's entropy equation. Entropy equals the Boltzmann constant k sub b times the natural logarithm of this maximum number of microstates. All right, so more mathematics when m particles occupy various energy levels. The total number of microstates w can be expressed as this n factorial divided by a1 factorial, a2 factorial, a3 factorial, and so on. So this is just the number of combinations. Assuming this n particles occupy a various number of energy levels, and we have a1 particles in energy level 1, a2 particles in energy level 2. You may actually think of a, uh, another analogy if you have 10 bars, you put this 10 bars in uh, three boxes, and let's say I know one box contains two bars, uh, another box mm -hmm. contains three bars, the third box contains uh, five bars, the number of combinations is uh, 10 factorial over 2 factorial over 3 factorial over 5 factorial. Uh, mathematically, we can uh, simplify the expression to be n factorial divided by the product of ai factorial. And the goal is to maximize W. However, we can also maximize the natural logarithm of W. Uh, this will also ensure that uh, W reaches maximum, if L and W reaches maximum. We have two constraints. Remember, N is a constant, E is constant. So really, we just need to maximize this L and W, which is L and N factorial minus now the sum of L and AI factorial under the two constraints. One constraint is he, the sum of the number of particles is a constant. And two, the total energy of the particles is a constant. So now we define a Lagrangian or so-called Lagrange function L. And L is the uh, function to be optimized. In this case, the natural logarithm of W. W is the number of microstates. And then minus alpha times the first constraint, first constraint written as a function with a value of zero. So it's just the sum of ai minus n. This is always zero. And then we have a second constraint. Therefore, we have minus beta times the second constraint as a expression of a function with a value of zero. So if you look at this, if the uh, total energy of all particles is always a constant, we can write it in this uh, form because, again, this part is always zero. Therefore, to maximize L and W, we just need to maximize this L. And why do we have this minus alpha times zero, minus beta times zero here? This is to ensure that the maximization of L or optimization of L is done under these two constraints. 
So now we're going to expand this L. L is ln w. ln w is ln n factorial minus the summation of ln ai factorial. And then we write out the two constraints. Alpha and beta are called uh, uh, Lagrange multipliers. And this method is called the method of Lagrange multipliers. Again, these two terms are included to ensure that these two constraints are enforced when we optimize this Lagrangian. Now, to maximize Lagrangian, we simply need to set dl over dA1 is 0, dl uh, divided by dA2 is 0, and so on, to maximize this L. And again, uh, we have two constraints. Remember, we have these two constraints. Uh, this is an isolated system. We have a fixed number of particles. We have a fixed amount of total energy. All right, so let's do dl over dA1 first. So when we do dl over dA1, we expand uh, this, this whole thing, and then we notice that n and e, they're constants. They do not depend on a1. So therefore, uh, this part does not depend on uh, a1. This part does not depend on a1. So this n does not depend on a1. Therefore, we can simplify this derivative. We have the first derivative of this part, so over here, and this part over here, times alpha, and this part times beta over here. Again, this E is also independent of A1 as this is a constant. So we have three terms here. And now, if we look at these three summations, they all include an infinite number of terms, but in this uh, summation, only ln A1 factorial depend on A1. A2 does not depend on A1, A3 does not depend on A1. So really, we just need to keep the first term of this infinite series, which is just logarithm of A1 factorial. And similarly, if we look at this summation of AI, well, again, only A1 depends on A1. A2 does not depend on A1, A3 does not depend on A1. So really, among this infinite series of A1, A2, A3, and so on, only A1 depends on A1, so we just copy this A1 here, and uh, we remove A2, A3, A4, and so on. Similarly here, we are uh, summing A1, Epsilon 1, A2, Epsilon 2, A3, Epsilon 3. Only the first term, A1, Epsilon 1, does depend on A1, therefore we just keep the first term. So now it's very simple here, and this is supposed to be zero to ensure this Lagrangian L is optimized. And now we'll use this uh, Stirling's approximation, assuming A1 is large, and then we're going to just uh, uh, simplify this uh, ln A1 factorial to be uh, A1 ln A1 minus A1. There's a negative sign here, therefore it becomes negative A1 ln A1 plus A1. So this to this is due to Stirling's approximation. And then we copy the second term and third term, and we again set this to be zero. So now we need to uh, evaluate the first derivative of this part. This part is simply uh, just, uh, we use the product rule for here, and you get uh, negative a1 times 1 over a1, and then minus ln a1, and then plus 1, and then minus alpha, and then minus beta epsilon 1 equals zero, and then we simplify this expression. Remember, we have over here we have uh, we have this uh, negative one minus ln a one plus one here. So therefore, we have just negative ln a one minus alpha minus beta times epsilon one equals zero, and then a one equals actually e to the power of negative alpha times e to the power of negative beta epsilon one. Both alpha and beta are constants. So really, a one depends on this epsilon one. And because it's e to the power of negative epsilon 1, you can see the higher the energy level, the smaller uh, this uh, uh, occupation number. And in general, we don't have to uh, put this uh, 1 in the subscript. It can be i or j. So we can have ai equals e to the power of negative alpha times e to the power of negative beta epsilon i. Uh, similarly, for aj, we just need to replace this epsilon i with epsilon j. So now we get a ratio between AI and AJ. The ratio between AI and AJ is simply e to the power of negative beta epsilon i over e to the power of negative beta epsilon j. And AI is proportional to e to the power of beta, negative beta epsilon i. 
And also, we can uh, write out this equation if we uh, try to uh, uh, normalize this AI by setting the sum of AI is equal to N. And then we have this expression to ensure the summation of AI is equal to N. Again, the summation of this is simply N times the summation of this guy divided by the summation of this guy, and then you get N. All right, so let's talk about this uh, occupation number AI again. Uh, the occupation number AI in various energy levels, epsilon I, can now uh, be used to obtain the value of beta. How so? Let's look at this equation. Let's look at this equation. AI is proportional to e to the power of negative beta epsilon I. So proportional means AI equals a constant times this exponential function. And then we take the logarithm of both sides. And then you have logarithm of AI equals the logarithm of that constant minus beta times epsilon I. So if you plot ln AI versus epsilon I, it's going to be linear, and the slope is going to be negative beta. So now we just do that. Uh, we just plot ln AI versus epsilon I, and we can obtain the slope. The slope is negative beta. And it was found that beta times temperature is a constant. So it's interesting. And the reciprocal of this product is Kb, the Boltzmann constant. Therefore, we have beta equals 1 over Kbt. And now we have this famous Boltzmann distribution. Ai over Aj equals e to the power of negative epsilon i over Kbt divided by e to the power of negative epsilon j over Kbt. Remember, 1 over Kbt is beta. Or we can use this uh, 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 proportion here. AI is uh, proportional to e to the power of negative uh, epsilon i over kbt. Or we can simply just uh, uh, use the equation. AI equals n over the sum of this exponential functions times e to the power of negative beta epsilon i. And again, it's very easy to prove the sum of this guy equals n divided by the sum times the sum of this guy. And the sum of this guy cancel with this guy, and then you get uh, this n in the end. Therefore, the sum of ai equals n in the end. So let me just uh, uh, put down the uh, speaker, and I'll prove this to you. Right, it's very simple now. The sum of AI is simply the sum of this expression, and you can tell that uh, this part does not depend on I. So it may sound uh, it may sound very strange. So you see I here, but really this I is a dummy variable. This part is the summation of the exponential function of uh, be negative beta epsilon I. Really, this part depends on the uh, expression of epsilon I, but not I. So if I change this i to uh, to n here, it does not affect the value of the sum. Okay, so I need to change this part to n. Uh, there's uh, there's some difficulty of changing this, so I have to change it back. So uh, my point is, if you replace this i with n and this i with n, uh, the value of the sum remains unchanged. And then uh, that's the reason we can take this out of the summation here, and then uh, we just sum 
this uh, exponential function over i, this sum is equal to this sum, and then the result is n. We just uh, normalized the expression here.